باب ما جاء من التغليظ في من عبد الله عند قبر رجل صالح فكيف اذا عبده which means the condemnation of the one who worships Allah at the grave of a righteous man and how then does this amount to worship of the man the condemnation of the one who worships Allah not worshiping other than Allah worshiping Allah at the grave of a righteous man and how then does this amount to worship of man how that can lead to the worship of a man in the Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anha reported that Umm Salama radiallahu anha ذكرت لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كنيسة رأتها بأرض الحبشة وما فيها من الصور فقال أولئك إذا مات فيهم الرجل الصالح أو العبد الصالح بنوا على قبره مسجدا وصوروا فيه تلك الصور أولئك شرار الخلق عند الله فهؤلاء جمعوا بين فتنتين فتنة القبور وفتنة التماثيل Umm Salama radiallahu anha, this is in Bukhari Muslim, mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ that in Abyssinia she saw a church full of pictures and statues. He ﷺ said, when a righteous man or pious worshipper among them dies, they build, and pay attention to the word build. They did not prostrate on the grave, but they build. Banaw, they build a place of worship over his grave. Is it anything more clear than this? Banaw ala qabrihi masjidah. They build a place of worship on his grave. And set up all kinds of pictures and statues. They are the worst of all creatures before Allah. They combine the two evils, worshipping at the graves and making graven images and statues. So this hadith clearly shows that uh, the worst of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who when a righteous man dies, they build over his grave a masjid, a place of worship. Because some people say what is being condemned is that they took the grave as a place of prostration. Right? No, this is a clear narration. Some of the narrations might mean this. But this is a clear narration in Bukhari a Muslim that says that they built over his grave a place of worship. And the question is, isn't this what is happening in many of the Muslim countries today? They built over the grave of a pious man a masjid. There is over 20,000 graves in the Muslim world that is being worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today. People turn to it besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They built over it places of worship, clearly, without no ambiguities in it. Someone might say, the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ's masjid was not built over the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. The hadith says, built over his grave. Righteous man dies, they built over his grave a masjid. The Prophet ﷺ masjid was built before. The Prophet ﷺ is buried in his house, in his room, والسلام, The masjid was never built over the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. Plus, the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ has so much virtues in praying in it, as the Prophet ﷺ stated there that so it's a different situation right uh, so that's why the other masajid can never be the same ruling plus the other question is did the prophet ﷺ ordered for his grave to be uh, in his masjid no did the companions of the Allah did that no did any of the early generations of islam approved of that no so where is that in our religion this is the acts of some men is it part of our religion no so why this is an evidence it's not an evidence. You see this point? When people say the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, this is an evidence that it's permissible to build masjid on top of the graves. The question is, what is the meaning of evidences in our deen? Quran, Sunnah, consensus, right? Where in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ for the people to build the masjid on top of the grave of the Prophet ﷺ? is nothing. Did the Sahaba did that? No, it came later on. Somebody did that. So where is that has to do with our religion? Has nothing to do with our religion, right? So it's never been an evidence. It can never be an evidence. If somebody say, does something hundreds of years uh, after the Prophet Sallallahu where is that an evidence in our religion, right? So uh, it is not an evidence in our religion, but as we mentioned before, the message of the Prophet Sallallahu is a special place where the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned the reward in praying that, and the Prophet's masjid was not built on top of the grave, the, the masjid was there before the Prophet ﷺ died. 
So uh, here it's clearly mentioned how they, when they would build this place to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, it's still forbidden to have it uh, close to the uh, graves of the pious people. Why? Because you are getting closer to the matters of shirk. And this is in the nature of the human being. They start like this, generation after generation, they would start seeking blessings from the one that is buried in the grave, the righteous one. And again, the human being tend to be forgetful about the end results of their actions. They don't see what things lead to after hundreds of years as the, those who were worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whether we know or not, it doesn't matter, it's enough for us to follow the orders of the Prophet ﷺ. Everything to protect our religion has been mentioned. So that means in this hadith what? Do not build a masjid over the grave. As simple as that. But what did many of the Muslims did? Disobeyed the Prophet ﷺ and they built masajid over the graves of righteous people. Is this something that is permissible? Where is that permissible? It's definitely not permissible. لَمَّا نُزِلَ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم تَفِقَ يَطْرَحُ خَمِيصَةً لَهُ عَلَى وَجْهِ فإذا اغتم بها كشفها فقال وهو كذلك لعنة الله على اليهود والنصارى اتخذوا قبور أنبياءه مساجد يحذر ما صنعوا ولولا ذلك أبرز قبره غير أنه خشي أن يتخذ مسجدا. Also in Al-Bukhari a Muslim authentic hadith when the death approached Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he began to draw a piece of cloth over his face sometimes covering and sometimes removing because of distress. He صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this state Allah's curse be upon the Jews and the Christians for taking the graves of their prophets as places of worship. Thus he وسلم, warned the people about their actions. Had there not been any fear of making the prophet's grave a place of worship, his وسلم's grave would have been as open as the graves <laughs> of his companions. That's why he's buried in his room والسلام, so it's not open. So it's not, till now, the prophet's grave is not a place of worship. So the, the grave of the Prophet ﷺ is not a place of worship because the grave of the Prophet ﷺ is in his room. And there are three walls between the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and the people outside. They cannot take the grave of the Prophet ﷺ as a place of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that way protected the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. So uh, the hadith clearly says that they are cursed. Why? Because they took the graves of their prophets as places of worship as places of worship, which is something that is forbidden. A Muslim reported from uh, Jundub ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu narrated, سَمِعْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَمُوتَ بِخَمْسِ This is a hadith narrating about the Prophet ﷺ before he died, the last wills of the Prophet ﷺ. Right? That means this is the most important will. Why? Because it's the last ones. Right? Uh, before he died by five days, يقول, it was never abrogated after that. يقول, خليل, خليلا, خليلا, مساجد, مساجد, I heard the Prophet وسلم, say only five days before his death. I am free and clear towards Allah of having any of you as my Khalil, especially close friend. Verily, Allah has taken me as his Khalil, just as he had taken Ibrahim السلام, as a Khalil. If I would have taken anyone from my Ummah as a Khalil, meaning a close friend, I would have taken Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu as a Khalil. Beware, those who preceded before you used to make their prophets' graves into places of worship. Beware, do not take any graves as places of worship. I forbid you to do that, to do so. Again, this is before the Prophet ﷺ died. That means it's not abrogated. It means it's such, a, it's such an important thing. The Prophet ﷺ saying that I free myself from having to take a close friend. Khalil is the closest, the highest level of love. Uh, and that is the khilla. And he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took me as a khalil, the highest level of love, the same way as Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's why some people say that Ibrahim alayhi salam is khalilullah and the Prophet sallallahu is habibullah. This is a wrong statement. The Prophet sallallahu is khalilullah, as it's mentioned. And the khilla is higher than just the love. It's the highest level of love, right? And he's habibullah, of course. He's the, the, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the most. And, but when it's mentioned in this context, it seems like there is difference. 
No, uh, the Prophet ﷺ was Khalilullah, meaning the highest level of love, not just the love in general, but the highest level of love the Prophet ﷺ reached, and he's the best of all the messengers of Allah ﷺ. And then he said, "Walau kuntu, if I was to take a Khalil from among my Ummah, I would take Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu." This is before the death of the Prophet ﷺ, which clearly states that the best of this Ummah after the Prophet ﷺ is Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. And his iman, if it's weighed versus the weight of the iman of all the ummah, the iman of Abu Bakr would outweigh them, which is uh, opposite to what the deviants, those who would undermine Abu Bakr This is by the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, clear statement that he is the Khalifa after the Prophet ﷺ. Those who people who before you, they used to take the graves of their messengers as places of worship. The Prophet ﷺ did not say that they are worshipping the graves, but they took it as a places of worship. Do not take the qubur as houses of worship, as places of worship. Of course, worshipping the graves is something that is very clearly forbidden. But the Prophet ﷺ here is forbidding them from taking it as a place of worship. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said that. That means it is not permissible for a person to pray in a graveyard. Only Salatul Janazah is permissible. There's no sujood and ruku' in it. But to pray Salat in Qubur is not permissible. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تجعلوا بيوتكم قبورا صلوا في بيوتكم لا تجعلوا بيوتكم قبورا Meaning, do not make your houses as graveyards. Pray at your homes. Meaning, pray the Sunnah prayer. Pray, pray optional Salat in your homes. Do not make your homes as graveyards. Meaning what? That you do not pray in the graveyard. The same thing, you should not make your home a graveyard. That means it's not permissible for you to pray in a place where it has a grave. The same thing with the masajid. A masjid that has a grave, it is not permissible for a Muslim to pray in. By the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. Again, not emotional, not what makes sense, not uh, it's okay if it's behind and the front and all these types of things. If we are slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala following the way the Prophet ﷺ, <laughs> I forbid you from doing that. That means you find a masjid that has a grave and salah time comes, do not pray in there. You're going to pray at home, pray at home and don't pray there. You don't find any other masjid, don't pray there. Pray in the streets, but don't pray in a place where it has a grave. Not the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, we said it's different. Any other masjid that has a grave in it, regardless where the grave is, it is not permissible to pray the salah there. Because the Prophet ﷺ himself, forbid us of doing such a thing. And you see the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. You would rarely find a masjid that has a grave and there's no shirk being committed in that masjid, which is in itself a proof. You go to any place, you would find people in there, some of them making tawaf around the grave, right? When it's the ibadah that's to be only done in the Kaaba. The only place where a person permissible for him to make tawaf is in Kaaba. But instead, they make tawaf around it. Even people that know Arabic language, even people that can look as scholars and they have imamas with things. I say that, for example, in Egypt, alhamdulillah, they are minimized now by the, by the sunnah, mashallah, is prevailing, but they're still present. The Masjid of Al Hussein, radiallahu anhu, for example, they claim that the head of Al Hussein is there. You go there, tawaf, constant tawaf around the grief, right? And if you tell people, you go to them and tell them, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would kill you if they're able to kill you. Right? You tell them, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ إِلَّا فَلَا تَدْعُمَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا That the masajid, the houses of Allah, do not call unto other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you would consider this jihad to take care of you. Right? They are weak in tawaf. They're calling other than Allah. They're saying, Ya Hussein, like this. Right? Major shirk. Getting applications of work, wiping it over the, the thing so that maybe he will get the job. Right? All kinds of things that is happening in the Muslim world as a result of this disobeying the orders of the Prophet ﷺ. The first ones, those who spread this among the Ummah, were well, originally the Fatimiyun, those renegade from the deen of Allah, those who invented all of these things, they were disbelievers. And they ruled the Muslims for hundreds of years, and they invented all these types of things opposing the orders of the Prophet ﷺ. So again, uh, it's clear uh, forbiddance of such a thing. And the next uh, hadith with the Prophet ﷺ, uh, hmm? 
Now, uh, the sayings of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. Can I read it? Nice. Yaqul. Wali Ahmad, bi sanad in jayid. So then after that he says, فَقَدْ نَهَا عَنْهُ فِي آخِرِ حَيَاتِهِ ثُمَّ إِنَّهُ لَعَنْ وَهُوا فِي السِّيَاقِ مَنْ فَعْلَهُ وَالصَّلَاعَ عِنْدَهَا مِنْ ذَلِكِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يُبْنَ مَسْجِدْ So what is forbidden is to pray there, is to build a masjid, even if there is no masjid being built, to sit there and to make ibadah. وَهُوَ مَعْنَا قَوْلُهَا خَشْيَ أَنْ يَتَّخَذَ أَنْ يُتَّخَذَ مَسْجِدًا That he was afraid that it had been taken as a place of worship. The Prophet ﷺ would never build a, a, a place of worship over the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, any place that a person pray in is considered to be masjid. As the Prophet ﷺ said, جُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا The earth has been made for me masjid, a place of worship. Not just a place of making the sujood, but any place that a person prays in is considered to be the word of masjid. Wali Ahmad bin Sanad bin Jayid, Ali ibn Mas'ud radi Allahu anhu marfu'an, inna min shirar al nasi man tudrikhum sa'atu hum ahya, wal ladina yatakhidun al qubura masajid. That the worst of the people, those who the hour would occur when they are alive, that means the day of judgment would occur on the worst people. As it's mentioned in the hadith, a wind will come to take the soul of the believers and those who will be on the face of earth are the worst ones. And these are the ones that the day of judgment will occur in them. And, وَالَّذِينَ يَتَّخِذُونَ الْقُبُورَ مَسَاجِدِ That the worst of men are those who uh, take graves as places of worship. Takes graves as places of worship. So, this is clear statements from the Prophet ﷺ. We're not yet talking about those who would worship the graves. When a person that is pious in the grave and people come and sit by the grave of this pious person and make dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make salah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but next to this righteous person's grave thinking that it has some virtuous or it's, it's good to do that next to his grave, this is forbidden clearly by the statements of the Prophet sallam. They are the worst of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the statement of the Prophet sallam. So that means... And this is what Islam or submission comes in place. Not everything might make sense to the people. And it doesn't have to. Why? Because we're slaves of Allah. What makes sense to the people, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, a person is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, this and that. But we're slaves of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu said that they are the worst people. That means that they are the worst people. Regardless of what makes sense or what not makes sense. And it definitely makes a perfect sense. Why? For the ibadah to be secure and purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens when people do this? Shaitan can comes into the dreams, generation come after generation, when ignorance prevails, and there are many uh, among the Muslims, they have no knowledge. So what do they do? They would associate oneness with Allah. And they would give gifts and vows to the one that is dead in the grief. And they would call him unto other than Allah. The question is, what is that? The difference between this and, the dif and what Quraysh did with their idols, it is the same thing. There is no difference. Even if they say La ilaha illallah, because they don't know what La ilaha illallah means. Right? So it shows how dangerous it is. And not to be deceived uh, by such things because it's such a dangerous thing. Worst thing is with something to do with the shirk and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, we did not mention anything but a verse of the Quran, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu And this is what we need to submit ourselves to and to protect our tawheed and to protect our religion by not associating partners with Allah.